All right. How's it going, everybody? Woo! Leafs fan is back. How you been, man? I haven't seen you in forever. How's it going? All right. Nick was first. Nick, Luca, Bart, Mattis. How's everybody doing? POV LEDs. What's P I mean, point of view LEDs? Oh, Creative is here. Fantastic. You watched F1? I've been wanting to watch the electric one. Are they still doing that electric formula race stuff? I want to watch that. My dad says it's awesome. I haven't watched it yet. Uh, you liked my recent Sonoff? Oh, three Atives, three recent Sonoff videos. Fantastic. Fantastic. He does good stuff, doesn't he? He does good stuff. All right. Finally made the list of patrons. Hey, Leafs fan. Yes, thanks. I, uh, I, I did do the update finally. It, it's, it was like about six months or more maybe since I had done the update, uh, updated that list. But yeah, glad I did. So, all right. Stubbs Christmas is here. Bummer for Verstappen. Oh, was that an F1? Oh, did somebody lose? Did he crash, maybe? The races of E-Formula 1 are great. Yeah, that's what I want to watch. That's what I want to watch. Looking to do LED strings on Christmas tree. Any word on the Dig Unos will be back in stock? Yes, very good news. So be, be watching closely, all right? Because here's what I'll tell you so far. <clears throat> we have now caught up on all of the back orders. So I had 371... <laughs> back orders and that's not individual devices that's orders that we filled uh since we since the devices arrived here which was like tuesday this past week so we were doing we tried to do 50 every day we had to do more than 50 every day to get them all out but we got them all out so uh everybody who had so many packages that's right quindor so many packages um it's been really fun though because the family gets together and got the kids trained to do it well and it's it's a good time so what will happen is um, now that we've got those back orders out, uh, now I got to take stock of inventory. That's actually what Dawson is doing in the background. So if you hear a little bit of rumbling, Dawson's back there in the background <laughs> and he's a uh, child labor. That's right. That's how we do things around here. Uh, so he's, he's packing them up, uh, packaging them all up in their little containers. And then we're going to get a count and then I'll know how many I can put on the website as, as released. Uh, and then I know Quindor's here. He can give us a, maybe a, a guesstimation. I know that they've been working on the next batch. So I absolutely guarantee that the ones that I have left are not going to suffice because I've got like 700 people on the waiting list. <laughs> so, um, but we'll get those out and then we'll get the next batch out as quick as we can after that. Okay. So you will get them. You will get them and you'll get them soon. <clears throat> Dennis says, what are the two extra wires on the LED strip for? They're for adding power so that you can power uh, directly to the LEDs, usually as a power injection thing down the way somewhere. Um, I do I do mention that in a video. So uh, Dennis and others, um, check out when you go to the when you go to my channel, there's a thing that says playlists. If you go there and you and you scroll to the right, I don't know how to make it go to the left, but I don't know how to put it more at the front, but there's an LEDs playlist. And there are some um, LED, uh, good LED videos on there that talk about stuff like that. Uh, Canada has some Digi Unos. Worldwide has Unos and Quads in stock. We're running out quickly. There you go. Um, somebody's asking, can I have more than one Node MCU hooked up to my WLED account? Yes, Jake, because you don't really have a WLED account. When you have the app, it really just is finding any WLED devices that you have on your network. So, yes, you can have more. I got your question every time you ask, Jake. <laughs> okay. All right. We got to do a couple things today. Let me lay out for you how this is going to go. Should I get a Dig Uno or a Node MCU? I think you should get a Dig Uno. Um, but if you can't get the Dig Uno, then get a Node MCU until you can um, until you can get uh, the Dig Uno, right? Because then you can still put up your lights, you can test everything, and then you can just replace it with a better with a better uh, uh, controller later. All right. Anyways, I got to focus. Thank you to Blade and the others. Uh, I will do my best to focus. So here's what we got to do today. This is how it's going to go down. All right. We're going to do some product stuff. So the good guys at Banggood, it's not Banggood Buddy Woody anymore. Banggood Buddy Woody, I think has moved up the ladder. And uh, so I have other people that I'm dealing with now, but anyways, they've sent me some things and um, I'm really excited about them actually. And so I told them I would spend some time talking about those things today. and. Um, so what I'm going to do is talk about one product and we'll spend a few minutes on it, whatever it takes, 10, 15 minutes. If you guys have questions, we'll answer questions. We'll, we'll talk about it. And then we'll, then we'll answer some questions about whatever you want. 
mostly LEDs I'm expecting, but home assistant, Sonoffs, I don't care, whatever, we'll answer questions, right? Uh, so we'll do that. And then we've got three products to get through. And the three products, I'll tell you what they are. One of them is um, this chair that I'm sitting in. Let me see if I can get my head out of the way. This chair, which is awesome chair. Okay. So this, this chair, uh, we'll talk about the chair. Um, we, I've got an Ender 3 now. So I, I, I've got an Ender 3 version 2. So we can talk about that a little bit. And I know 3Ative had some specific questions about that. So I wanted to uh, talk about that. Spend all the time on the Ender 3 printer. <laughs> we'll talk about that and we'll definitely answer 3Ative's questions. He had a couple of good questions for me. Thank you very much for subscribing. Six months. Wow. Let's do this for you. Great talk. Great to carring. Great to carring. <laughs> Sorry if I totally destroyed your name, but thank you for being six months of subscribing on Twitch. That's fantastic, dude. Thanks a bunch. Um, and then finally, the thing I'm most excited about, uh, which we got to leave plenty of time for, is I have one of those hologram fans. If you haven't seen a hologram fan, you will. And it's awesome. And I think this hologram fan has the potential to make its way into a lot of these guys that have uh, real crazy uh, holiday displays. Um, it's really cool, right? Dang, Z's is super focused. I know, right? It won't last. Don't worry, Carlo. It won't last. <laughs> okay. All right. So let's talk about the chair. So as you see here, I'm sitting in the Blitzwolf chair. So let me show you what this Blitzwolf chair is. Oh, and I think all of the um, links for all these things, um, which are affiliate links, are in the description. If they're not, then let me know. But they're, I think they're in the description. <clears throat> All right, so this chair, it says here 114, but actually I think in the link that he sent me, it was like 105. So maybe that link that you that's in my description is even a more of a deal than this. This is already on a flash deal, but it's even more of a deal than this. So typical gaming chair, right? It does have a footrest. It does have a footrest which pulls out. And let me tell you my experience with gaming chairs, okay? I've had four different gaming chairs now. Um, and I've thought, I thought, the first one I had did not have a footrest, and I always found myself wanting someplace to put my feet. You don't see any links? Okay, then I'm going to make sure right now that we get some links. Let me fix that. Dang. Thanks, Restream. Botched the links. Let me get that. Let me do that first, okay? Because it will help if you can, if you can play along. Um, all right, let's go there. But about the footrest, so what I've found is, oh, there's my, <laughs> there's another chair that I've had that we'll talk about. What I've found with the footrests is that I don't use them. I don't use them. So do you guys, who of you that have these kind of gaming chairs have a footrest? Oh, yep, that's not there. <clears throat> okay, let's put them there. All right. Start with the gaming chair. Here's the gaming chair. Oop. I thought I would use the footrest more, um, but I just don't. And then we will put in here this hologram fan. I was going to talk about a bench power supply, but I'm going to talk about that next time. It is cool, and we will use it, but we'll use it next time instead of this time. But I'll put the bench power supply link here as well. Okay, and then I did... Man, that sucks I didn't save it because I did have a good... I made a link specifically for the... Um, for the Ender 3. I'll make a new Ender 3 link and give it to you. But okay, now there should be some links there. All right. All right. Forgive me. So sorry. Mucho sorry. All right. So here we are back, back at these again. Um, let's talk about the first gaming chair I had. This was the first gaming chair I had. Notice there's no, there's no footrest there. Uh, but it does have a backrest. It did have arms. I actually really liked this chair. It was a lot more expensive. And when, when, when I bought it, it was like 400 bucks. And this was several years ago. So I really liked it. The downsides of this chair, it's really firm, which I thought was bad at first when I sat on it. But after a while, I thought, okay, actually, I think I kind of like that it's firm. That's actually a good thing. Um, and then I used it for several years. And then the frame broke. So leaning back in it too much, the frame broke and I welded it back together actually because I liked it that much. I welded the frame back together and it broke again. So at that point, I didn't want to spend $400 on another chair. 
so I didn't buy another one of these. Instead, I started to try and find something else. Um, so I first went with this one, Autonomous. And it had what looked like a really good footrest uh, arrangement here. So I thought, oh, this will be this will be great, you know. And it turned out it wasn't that great. I think of all of them, this one's probably my least favorite. I don't even use this one anymore. I gave it to the boys to, to, to use. I do still like the way they did their footrest. And it did have some comfortable parts to it. But overall, this isn't my favorite. One of the, one of the things I really liked about uh, this Vertigear one that I don't like about all the other ones is the height. The Vertigear goes really low. And that's good. I like getting my armrests under my desk. So I like that part about that Vertigear one. Um, and all these ones that I'm going to tell you about, I didn't, I didn't really like that they stay so high. You like the mesh back? Hey, if you like the mesh back, this one definitely has mesh back. Um, and it's got, a, you know, the, the headrest was a little bit funny. So anyways, it's, I'm not going to tell you any one of them is the perfect one and any one of them is the worst one, but um, that was what I went to next. And then I thought, okay, well, I'm going to try something cheap on Amazon and I, and I want a footrest. I thought still I wanted a footrest. So I bought this respawn one and look, I bought it in August, right? And it looks really cool. And I like a few things about it. I like the way the armrests go. It's got a good footrest again. Uh, it's also a little too high. And then what it turned out that I didn't like about it, funny enough, was that it was really soft. It was really soft. Uh, and, and it got uncomfortable if you sit in it for a long time. So it turns out that having a hard seat, at least the bottom seat, that's a bit firm is better. Uh, it, you know, you want it to give a little, but if it gives too much, then it, it gets uncomfortable fast and pretty soon you're just sitting on the wood or whatever's underneath that. So, um, this one I don't use either. I, the, the boys use it a lot, so it's okay, but not the best. Now we're at this one. And I got to say, I know this is tough because I'm obviously biased. They gave me this chair and asked me to, to uh, talk about it and stuff. I'm obviously biased, but I will, I will honestly say that especially for the price, this is my favorite chair. Um, it's got a nice firm bottom. So it's, it's similar to the Vertigear. It's a little wider than I would like. I kind of liked that the Vertigear was nice and tight, kind of held me in snug. But if you, if you've got a bigger bum than me, uh, which some people do, then, then that maybe that's okay. Um, so I like that. It's got the footrest, which honestly I haven't used. It's a little too high. The price is, is really good, especially if you get it for 105 right now. Um, everything else about it is pretty comfortable. So a couple things that uh, I will tell you to watch out for if you, if you do get this chair is uh, the instructions. These are the instructions. Let's see if I can put some light on that for you. These are the instructions, and that's really it. <laughs> so the instructions are pretty scant and uh, it does come completely disassembled. I mean, it, there's not much of it that is put together when you get it. So part of this price, you're going to spend a little extra time putting it together, but um, it's not bad. I mean, I got to say, I, I think if my kids, like if my boys were like, hey, dad, I want a gaming chair. This is one uh, that I would buy for them rather than the others, because this is nice and cheap. Putting it together is not a big deal. And honestly, it's pretty comfortable. I haven't had it long enough to tell you about the durability. Um, but so far, it's been pretty good, right? So that's it. There's the gaming chair, okay? Now, my back used to hurt all the time after sitting. I love the Secret Labs chair. I don't, now you don't have that trouble. Awesome. You get what you pay for. Yeah, that's true. How many pieces does it ship as? Oh my gosh, Carlo, it's got to be, if you don't like putting things together, this is not the one for you. It's not the one for you. I mean, it's got to be 50 pieces or something like, you know, the arms are, the arms are taken apart. The, the hinges on the sides, the hinges on the sides you have to put together. You have to cover them. Uh, the base plate is in several pieces like, whew. okay. Um, you would think so, someone could produce instructions. And just photocopying them off from then on. Yeah, I, I, as I was halfway through it, I thought, boy, I wish I would have filmed putting this thing together, but maybe I'll get another one and film putting it together. Anyways, um, bare metal power. Ooh, I don't know what Jake means. Um, they come back with a different theme. It's always unsettling when a chair arrives in a flat box. Yeah, <laughs> that's for sure. Oh, there's the Secret Labs chair. Oh, the Titan. Secret Labs Titan chair. Let's check that one out. Whew. 
Woo. Yeah, I bet. So I, w- I would guess, tell me about it. Is, is it firm? Because just, just looking at it, it looks to me a lot like that Vertigear as far as this, the, this, the firmness of it. But that's what you use, Blade? Too expensive? Yeah, that's a bit expensive for me too. I probably wouldn't. I looked at them when I, was, when I bought this one and I was trying not to spend a bunch of money. But of course, I bought three separate chairs and I ended up spending as much money as if I had just bought one. Firm, but not too firm. Yeah, good. Paul has the secret labs chair. Yeah, probably. I also like, you know, it's, this is silly. This is just me being silly. I like, I like Blitzwolf as a, as a brand name. Like, I know it's not like a, a, it's not like a big name, but they make a lot of the switches and stuff that we use in smart home. Like I've got, you know, some Blitzwolf receptacles and I know that they've made several little things like that, but anyways. Okay. So that's it. There's the chair. We can, I can answer questions about chairs. That's fine. Let's answer a couple questions about something else. Yeah, their plugs are great, Milobi. They do make good plugs and stuff. You have the Secret Labs chair too, Thomas? Well, if Santa's good to me, maybe Secret Labs chair. Can I tell us what is the car to use for the solar energy information? Steve, I yes, I can, and I have in the past. A lot of people ask that, and it's um, uh, it's very popular. I have a gist about it. It's basically an integration with my solar system, which uh, you can usually do through um, PV Outpost. PV Outpost is a service, um, was it Outpost or Output? I always forget. It's Output. I'm sorry. PV Output. So pretty much no matter what solar system you have, there's a decent chance that your solar system has an API that links or that is um, that can output to this PV Output um, service. And then Home Assistant has an integration for PV Output. Home Assistant might also have an integration for your specific solar system. I mean, we're in the one solar system that we do have. <laughs> but for your inverter, it may have, home system may have one. If it does not, you can use PV output um, and it works It works great, gives you what you need. It doesn't, it doesn't uh, update quite as fast probably as if you had uh, one that was integrated specifically for your uh, inverter. So that's what gives me the solar stuff at the top. And then the stuff at the bottom I get through um, simple circuit. All right, thank you for subscribing. Um, the simple circuit, is it simple circuit? I always get that wrong. It's not simple circuit. It's something else. DIY power monitoring. I always get the name wrong. Build your own energy monitor, energymonitoring.org. What's it called guys? Do you remember again? I can't remember. Hologram fan, hologram fan. (laughs) I can't remember the name of it, but anyways, that's how that works. And then if you, and then the specifics of like what this is and how this card works, this is a custom card. It's for, um, it's a custom, custom bar card is what it's called. And if you go to, uh, my gist GitHub gists and look at all of mine, oops, I want to just look at my gists. It's in here. This is my whole love lace right here. So I'll just drop this in there, just chat for you guys. So it's a whole love lace uh, right there. And specifically, if you scroll down here, you can find the bar card solar, right? So this is the custom bar card and this is how it inputs the solar stuff, okay? So you can see how I arrange it. You can copy it, do what you want with it. All right, good question, good question. We'll answer a couple more and then we'll move on to the next thing. Less gist. Bare metal power supplies. Go into detail about it. Jake. Jake's asking a lot of questions and they're good questions uh, and he really wants me to hear them. So when you say bare metal power supplies, I guess what you're talking about is when I say bare metal, I mean the ones that don't have a plastic enclosure. Okay. The ones I know you're trying to get noticed and I want to answer your questions. (laughs) Repeating the same question over and over again. (laughs) Anyways. The bare metal power supplies are just a power supply that does not have a plastic enclosure, okay? And the good thing about it is those usually go to higher power outputs. So the ones that have a plastic enclosure usually max out at like 10 amps. Um, So if you want to go bigger than 10 amps, then you'll usually have to get one of those bare metal ones, which means you'll have to put your own enclosure around it. It also means probably it's gonna make noise. Uh, sometimes there's a fan or just a hum that goes on with those. So um, if, if you're in a situation where you're going to have the power supply near something, 
than uh, or near somebody and it's going to bother you if there's noise, then don't use the bare metal power supplies. That's it. That's There's really nothing else special about them. They're just the bigger power supplies. You can get them small. You can get one amp and three amp and 10 amps that are smaller, um, uh, that are bare metal still. But, you know, if, if you're going to put it in an enclosure, you'll save some money by using the bare metal ones because they don't come with the wires attached either. You don't come with an input and output wires. You have to do that yourself. So, okay. So there you go. Bare metal power supplies. Do I have a video about how I made my GitHub with your config? I can't remember if you made one. I think I did. I think I did. Um, it's been it, it's been a bit. It's been a bit. Uh, do you guys remember? It's probably it was probably a stream. It was probably during the during the quarantine streams, maybe. And I don't remember specifically. Um, if I ever chopped it up into something smaller, but let's look and see. There may be something here. Zigbee touch display. Uh, animated backgrounds, forklift. So this was during all this time, it might be in there somewhere. I can't remember. It doesn't look like I did something specific about how I got it onto GitHub. I know we did it during a stream. So go back during like March and see if you can find something in there. Sorry, that's the best I got right now. I, I wish I had a, uh, wish I had more time. If I had more time, I'd do some more. Sorry, buddy. All right. There it goes. Um, what's the discord? Okay. Somebody showed Jake how to get into the discord. How do you play the music out loud, Jake? So some people uh, will do it by broadcasting to a radio station. That's how most people do it. And then you just have a sign in your yard that says tune into this radio station. So that requires an FM transmitter, which you can connect to the computer that's running X lights. And it will then output as an audio output to that, uh, to that radio uh, signal, that, that channel. Uh, and then others uh, can, you could do speakers outside. But I think more commonly people do it with an FM transmitter. For me, I will do. I would like to do it as speakers because I would like people to walk to the house because most of our display, we don't have a lot yet, but it's going to be on the back side of the house because we've got a park there. And so people can sit in the park or walk by and so that so they won't be in their car. And that's good, too, because we live in a valley that is really tight. And when people sit in their cars with their motors idling, it fills up everything with a lot of smog and goo. So. Is there a way to do it on speaker? Yes, absolutely. There's a way to do it on speakers. You just have to have the speakers connected or the output somehow coming from the computer where you're running X lights. Okay. From Tunisia. That's awesome. Welcome from Tunisia. How you doing? Okay. So let's do this. So that's that. Uh, we answered a few questions, took a little break. We did the chair. Let's move on to the Ender 3. Shall we? The Ender 3. Here it is, boys and girls. Are there any girls? Maybe one or two. Nobody problem. Um, so this is the Ender 3 version 2. Um, version 2, I don't know the specific updates that it has, but I I know that the controller, when you look down here at the where the controller is, I guess, I don't know where to point. Eh. This little controller is different. It's got a different... Um, uh oh, anybody but buffering issues? No. 2000 LEDs on my place and have some props on my lawn. Nice job, Nick. <laughs> um, so I know one of the things is it's an updated controller. Um, so a lot of people really like that. Um, I will say that I thought it was touch, a touch display and it's not, that's okay. It's probably better not to touch it anyways. Um, so it, you do it with a little bit of the dial and then clicking the dial. Sometimes it's hard to see which thing you've got activated. So you dial it and then you you know have to click the thing, but you're not quite sure um, which one it is. Uh, it, it comes mostly disassembled as well. Now, when I first got my first 3D printer, I got one that was all put together, but it was a couple thousand dollars. Okay, so you, you again, you pay for it. Um, up front if you want to have it put together. But putting it together is honestly not too hard. I, I followed the instructions. The instructions were pretty good. I, a couple things that caught me off guard when I was assembling it um, are that all that these, like these bars, there is a right and a left and an up and a down. 
because of where they put different holes and stuff. Too much 11. I don't show me more stuff. <laughs> so if we're buffering, I can try and turn off blue iris. That might be part of the problem. First, I'm going to open blue iris, which is probably going to make it crash. Proud owner of a CR6SE. So those ones are big, right, Will? And which is awesome. Man, my cameras look so good. Can I just show you around my house for a minute? You guys just want to see the house? Ooh, it's... There. Let's just give you a little tour. Because there's nobody around. I don't like anyway. Here's the house. This is Blue Iris. This has nothing to do with what we're talking about on the stream today. But this is Blue Iris. This is how I would definitely suggest that you... If you're going to do DVR around your house and you want local control and all that stuff and you want to be able to use some different kinds of cameras this is the best system for that so this one's in the toy room which is called the xbox room because that's where the kids play xbox <laughs> this is the hallway here we can see people roaming around at night uh if they come out of their rooms janice likes to see that this is the driveway so there's my beautiful truck there's the corner of the rv um the front door downstairs basement inside the garage the backyard the theater room the kitchen and then my office <laughs> all right, now we're going to turn all these cameras off. Turn them off, turn them off, turn them off. Inactive. Boop, 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 boop. That should cut down the um, should cut down the CPU usage here of my computer. First squirrel of the day. <laughs> huh? No more buffering for a couple of minutes. Oh, good. I hope so. Sorry about the buffering, everybody. Is Blue Iris free? Yes, Carlo, Blue Iris is free but it limits you to the number of cameras initially, but it's a one-time lifetime purchase, which is pretty rare. And so if you do purchase it, then you can have as many cameras as you want. Uh, and it's only like 60 bucks. It's for what it is. It's crazy cheap. Um, so I, I, it's, and it's one guy who's done all the developing for it. So I love those kinds of projects. Um, uh, and, and so I, I'm happy to buy it. And it's hard to find that, right? It's hard to find a, a good software that has not bought into the subscription model. And I hate the subscription model. I think we all hate the subscription model. They love it because they get more money out of it, right? We, we sign up for a subscription for Adobe and we pay three times as much as we would have otherwise paid over the course of a few years. So uh, anyways, so I, I'm glad to hear that uh, Adrenalized uh, loves Octoprint. One thing that I think will we might do today if we get time to come back to the 3D printer is set up Octoprint. So on this printer right now, the way you load up the models is you just put them on an SD card, you slice them, put them on an SD card, put them in the machine, and then they show up on the screen. You just click print and they go. So it's easy. But uh, my other printer has been hooked up to Octoprint and I love Octoprint and I want to hook this up to Octoprint. I looked into, could I use, because Octoprint mine is running on a Raspberry Pi. And I thought, well, could I just run another printer, connect another printer to that same uh, session of, of Octoprint? And the answer to that is no, you can't. Um, so I'm just going to set up another Raspberry Pi. It's no problem. I got a bunch of them. It works really well. And it lets you control it and have a, a web interface. And, and you don't have to touch it at that point. So um, I'm going to do that eventually. And if we get time today, maybe we'll do it today. All right. Now, 3Ative had a couple of specific questions. And the specific questions that Creative had were one about the slicing software, what, right? What slicing software? And the other one is uh, was about the 3D modeling software. So I've talked about some of these things in the past, but I have no problem repeating myself. Like I said, I have no problem repeating myself. Dad joke, dad joke alert. Okay, hold on. It's not my You can easily add multiple sessions of Octoprint on a one Pi. Is that, was that, Will, is that because if you run Docker or something? You have to show me how to do that, Will, at some point, because I don't know how to do that. And, and when I asked, there was a problem with, oh, no, buffering again. Dang it. I wonder if anybody else is watching, like, YouTube or something. Maybe they are. You added the BL Touch, Chris. So what Chris is talking about, the BL Touch, the BL Touch is a is a uh, a little sensor that you mount on your hot end that checks your bed leveling and then offsets your uh g code excuse me offsets your g code to keep your prints level um 
I I will say my my lulls bot. I almost never uh, run. Uh, I almost never have to level it. Okay, I almost never have to level the bed for the lulls bot. The only time I level the bed is if I change the extruder. Um, and it usually works out fine. Uh, part of that I think is because the screws that it, that you use to tighten it are really pretty tight. The springs are really firm and so it's hard to tighten and, and so it doesn't come loose. What I have noticed with the Ender 3, and you guys that have them will probably notice, is they do, uh, the, the bed tends to get unlevel. And I think it's because the, the dials that you use to level it, those springs, they're not super strong. And so uh, it tends to loosen a little. So you do have to re-level it every once in a while. But leveling, it's not too hard. So, you know, you, you put it down at zero, you make the adjustment, you turn off the steppers, and then you just slide the head around the board, the bed and it takes, you know, a couple minutes to, to slide it, to slide it around and to check the leveling everywhere. So not too big of a problem, um, but it is definitely something that I've had to do. Another thing that has come up with that I've had issue with uh, on this is the uh, when, when you feed the when you feed the um, filament through, it kind of gets stuck. It kind of gets stuck. Uh, when it uh, goes into the tube, this Bowden tube that goes to the extruder. Um, so I have to kind of cut the end at a right angle and then just really watch it and slide it in there. So that's a little troublesome, but not too bad. How loud is it, Dennis? It's actually quite quiet. It's actually really quiet. Um, I, I was really impressed. I've had it running. I mean, I moved it now, but it was right here by my desk running and uh, it, it worked really well. I didn't have a problem with it at all. So... Um, yeah, very, very happy about how quiet it runs. I don't know if one of the upgrades that they did to this one that makes it a version two, I don't know if maybe part of that is, um, you know, the stepper controllers that they use, the drivers. Maybe they used more quiet drivers. Oh, yeah, sure enough. Features, there it is. The silent TMC 2208 stepper drivers. So those are the stepper drivers that are really quiet. So my Lulzbot makes a ton of noise. It almost kind of sings. You know, so it's kind of cool when you're watching it for a couple minutes. But if it's sitting next to you and running for hours, it would drive you nuts. So that, there you go. This thing, the Ender 3 version 2, has these really quiet stepper motors, uh, stepper motor drivers, sorry, which makes the stepper motors really quiet. I guess they take really, really small steps maybe is the, is the, is the, uh, the reason for that. But uh, yeah, very quiet. Very quiet. Definitely. All right. Um... New screen updated with interface. What else? New heating element enclosure. I do like that enclosure that is around the heating element. It looks cool. Uh, easy filament feed function. XY bent belt tensions. Yes, they do. Ha it does have the belt tighteners. So those that little dial right there, and then there's a dial on the other side up there. The blue little blue dials. Those are for tightening the belt. Uh, you shouldn't have to do that very often, but it makes it easy when you're setting it up to do that. Um, Anyways, there's a couple other things here to give you a toolbox. Oh yeah, that's the other thing. A lot of people, I was looking for upgrades. I was like, okay, so I've got a Ender 3 now. What do I want to update on the Ender 3? And uh, one of the things that a lot of people were printing a lot was a little drawer for putting all your stuff in. Oh man, more buffering. Hey, could you go ask everybody to turn off whatever streaming stuff they're doing? Because I'm having internet issues. Problems buffering. Nobody's gonna want to watch my stream if I'm buffering. Uses the same steppers as your curtains, pretty much totally silent. Yeah, that's right. You were telling me to use those a long time ago. Oh, Jake. Five wires coming from the strand. So, Jake, there are five wires. There are five wires. There, but there are two voltage wires. So two positive voltage wires, two negative voltage wires, and a, and a data wire, okay? They just put those wires there for convenience, for connecting power, all right? They're the same color. That's why, that's how you know what, what they do, okay? All right. It's okay for a lot of people and buffering for others. Okay. Good, good. Well, anyways, we just asked everybody to stop streaming. Thank you, Dawson. Hi, baby. Hi. You doing okay? Yeah. Oh, good. Are you sad? Yeah. Okay. I'm just gonna go YouTube. Oh yeah, YouTube will do that to you. Mm -hmm. Okay, love you. Uh, okay, where was I? Oh, the toolbox. Anyways, there's a they 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 put a toolbox drawer under there. So uh, that was one thing that a lot of people were printing that we didn't I didn't have to print. Another thing uh, that um, I think is is different is how they 
the resolution dropped, but no buffering. Okay, good. Um, how they manage the cables. They actually, I think did a decent job of managing the cables. Another friend of mine that has the Ender 3 said, first thing you got to do is get, you know, print these cable, cable chains, right? So I did, I printed a bunch of these cable chains. Um, but I did, I put them on and I realized I don't think I need them. I kind of preferred it without them. So I took them back off. <laughs> um, so anyways, that's, that's that. Let's talk about the things that 3 have asked about. Okay. 3 have asked about what do I use for slicing? So I use Cura and there is a Cura, um, the newest version of Ultimaker Cura 4.7.1 is what mine is. Uh, so you can download that for your operating system of choice. Um, and then, uh, I don't, because I don't have Octoprint, I can't connect directly from this. So you have to export, you know, your, your G code files out of here, but that's not too big a deal. Um, but we can go through a little bit of the slicing and I, I read some stuff of, that you should change that you might need to change, but I haven't noticed a big difference. I changed those couple settings and then, and then went back to what they were. And anyways. Oh, look at that. 4.8 is now available. I'm not going to download it right now, so, so we don't have to wait. So here it is. Uh, this is this is the slicer, and there are profiles already for the printers. So once you when you first set this up, you can just go add printer, and then you can search. Well, you can search your network, or let's see, what else did I do? Add a non-networked printer, right? So if you if you have a printer that's not connected to your network, this is where you find it. Of course, it's set up for Ultimaker, but they also put in here all of the, uh, well, a lot of the other brands. So you can just go down here, find Creelty. There's Creelty 3D, and then whatever Creelty printer you have. So I have the Ender 2, or sorry, the Ender 3. This is not the Pro, but this is the Ender 3 in its version 2. So I just selected that, and then it, in, it imported it. I could probably do my Lulzbot here as well. I just use... Lulzbot has a specific version of Cura just for them that they've customized a bit more to. If I can remember the alphabet, I can probably find Lulzbot in here. K K L. No, look at that. Lulzbot's not here. So if you want Lulzbot, then you have to use that. Someone's cables were incorporated into their print. Oh no, that's awful. <laughs> that is awful. Mark's watching on a 65 inch TV. Hello, Mark. <laughs> All right. I know my my stream is probably only 720p. We've tried to fix that in the past. I thought we had fixed it. And then when I go back and watch it, it seems to be in 720 again. Anyways, check this out. The Ender is on Amazon for $20 more than Banggood and it has prime shipping. There you go. There you go. It's a great time for deals, my friends. Great time for deals. So the settings, let's look at the settings real quick. So right here um, in the settings, where are, there's a different ways to modify it. Oh, here it is, this one, I'm sorry. I clicked this. This is the uh, nozzle and the material that you're using. So if you're using a different kind of material, like I use this PLA plus. Oh wow, it even shows you, it even gives you colors, that's fun. So I use the eSun PLA plus, and I, and I will say, man, it makes a difference. If you use crappy filament, you'll be hating life. Um, and when for for me, crappy filament is probably just old filament in most cases. Maybe maybe the actual mixture of the plastics is not quite right, but they're brittle. Like if you get a bad PLA, it just snaps every time you try and use it. Snap, snap, snap. So that stuff's just garbage. P e Sun PLA Plus has been really good to me, so I'm happy to use that uh, all the time for most things. Now. Over here in the uh, print settings, uh, oh, why does it say not supported? Oh, is it because I used this instead of having it be generic PLA? Oh, isn't that funny? Oh, that's too bad. So if you select a specific, if you select a specific uh, filament, then the preset profiles don't show up. That's lame. That is totally lame. Huh. All right, fine. Well, over here, you've got different quality of settings to choose from. So low quality is going to be your fastest. It's not going to be very fast, but it'll be your fastest. So it'll be higher layer lengths or higher layer heights. So bigger layer heights. So you'll have more lines in your print. 
and uh, it'll probably move faster. You might get more stringing and stuff like that. The Esun filament dryer. I should have a look at that. That's a good idea. I think I think me, dude, how am I ever going to say your name right? Can you send me like an audio of your name so that I, so I can say it right? <laughs> because you're always making comments and I'm always saying your name and I never get it right. And I'm sorry. Noob question. What is slicing? Oh, great question, Mathis. I, I'm happy to answer that question. So slicing is the process of taking a 3D model. Uh, and we'll talk about making how you make a 3D model or where you get 3D models. But it's the process of taking a 3D model and turning it into basically a whole bunch of coordinates, XYZ coordinates, that will tell the motors in this in the machine exactly where to go. Okay. So you take a you take a 3D model and you can look at it and, and it'll be in this whatever software it is. And then in order to actually print that, you need to slice it into layers, basically. And that's why it's called slicing. And so you, it runs through a software and it takes all of the, the shapes and everything and it turns it into XYZ coordinates. And then it just runs this long list of XYZ coordinates. It's called G code. So the G code is super long XYZ coordinate list. And it just tells the motor exactly where to move. And it just blasts through those XYZ coordinates, you know, as it's, as it's printing. Okay. So that's what slicing is. It's the step that you have to take between creating the model or downloading the model and giving the model to the printer. So it's the, it's what the printer needs to be able to move and do the stuff uh, correctly. Right. Said it once before though, pronounced you did. I'm so sorry. I Tommy, I Tommy, I Tommy. Okay. I'm sorry. I Tommy. <laughs> I said it right before. <laughs> oh, I'm sure we did this. Think of egg slicer turned vertically. That's a good way to put it. Will. That's a good way to put it. It's like an egg slicer turned on its side. So if I were to buy one, should I go for the V2 more than the V1? I would say so, Thanos. What's the price difference? What's the price difference? I know that the having the probably the biggest reason to get the version two is going to be that uh, this updated stepper drivers. That's going to be the biggest reason to get the version two. I would say don't touch your face. <laughs> All right. Oh, Phil, what are we going to do with the Wolverines? I don't know, brother. Oh. Man, I don't know. I'm just crying. I'm, I fortunately haven't even watched the last two games. Oof. Is AliExpress trustworthy or should I stay with Amazon? They're trustworthy, Jake. Yeah, it takes longer, but I've bought tons of stuff from AliExpress uh, and Banggood, and they're fine. I mean, AliExpress is very, very established. Banggood's smaller, but they're very established. Yeah, V2 for the silent is big. It's very big, very important. Awesome, awesome. Okay, so let's uh, let's see. Is there anything else in the slicer to talk about? Let's move the chairs here. Anything else in the slicer? Threative, what did you have any specific questions, amigo, about the slicing? Um, I've used the standard settings for the most part. I did change a couple things initially, like I think I changed uh, the print speed. I think I slowed down the print speed, and I increased the um I increase the retraction to try and get rid of some stringing those are minor things you know that when you really get into it uh when you when you really get into 3d printing you there are people who make some really fine-tuned settings in here to really get things to print really nice based on your printer i have not reached that level of expertise yet if you want to do that i would highly recommend bk hobby BK Hobby is a guy that uh, I've had on the stream here before. I think he's a, he, we, we still like him even though he's an open hab user. <laughs> um, but he's got a discord channel and he answers lots of questions. Zombu is a, is a cool dude that hangs out in his channel a lot. And they talk a lot about 3d printers. We have a 3d printer channel on my discord as well. So I started with Cura and learned Prusa and I love it. Prusa. So Prusa is a different slicer. There's a lot of different slicers, you know, there's a lot of different slicers. I, I've gotten used to using Cura. Um, I tried a few others, but I'm happy with this one. I'm going to stick with this one. Okay. Uh, the last thing I'll talk about with the 3D printing is just how you make your models. Okay. I think for most people, if you're not super experienced with models, just wanted to know what you used. I'm also learning Fusion 360 this week, but curious what you use for modeling. Perfect. Three, perfect. Okay. The first modeling software that I'll use 
or that I will tell you about is Tinkercad. Um, Tinkercad is what I would recommend for anybody who is starting 3D, a 3D model design that doesn't have any model design background. So if you don't have any, you don't have any design background. I don't remember what I signed in with before, but maybe this will work. If you don't have any, uh, any background with drafting and stuff, then, oh, here it is. Yeah, it's me. Then I would suggest Tinkercad because Tinkercad lets you, let's just create a new design. Tinkercad lets you do a lot of things that are kind of drag and drop, right? So Tinkercad, you can say, oh, I want, you know, my basic shape is going to be square. So I'm just going to drag a box and then you can just drag edges and you can change the shape of the box pretty easily. Okay. Twist it around, you know, do stuff with it. And then when you need to, um, you know, take part of this out, you can take part of it out. You can subtract part of it with things like this. I think this will be a subtraction. So we can take this part out. Again, you can adjust how much of it you're going to take out. And then I don't remember how you do it. I think, is it this? Not mirror, no. Once you've put that shape there, then I think you got to select them both and then hit this. Did that work? Yeah. Okay, so then that, that took that edge out of it, right? See, that took that edge out. So a lot of people use this. Another good, good thing about Tinkercad that I will tell you is you can edit STL files. So for those of you, maybe the guys that have even done 3D printing for a while, you know that it's a pain in the butt to edit STL files. What is an STL file? An STL file is the way you will get most of your models if somebody else designed them. So I get almost all my models from Thingiverse. There are a few other uh, places out there in the web where they have collections of 3D models that people have uploaded, but a lot of them just link back to Thingiverse. <laughs> so Thingiverse is the place to go to get models. Okay. When you get a model from Thingiverse, most of the time it will come out as, let's just grab this thing here. This is this cute little Dra uh, Dracula guy, right? Okay. He's cute. Okay. So you download the files. Uh, let's not even bother downloading. We'll just go grab an STL file from that I already have. When you have an STL file, the STL file is not really editable. The STL file is what you put into the slicer. All right. But if you have an STL file that does that you got from, from Thingiverse, but it's not quite right and you want to modify it a little bit, Thingiverse is one of the few softwares that lets you do that really well. Now, maybe, maybe Fusion 360 has gotten better at that, but when I tried to use it a few months back, it it wasn't really good at that. Um, so I, I used Thingiverse when I've had to do that in the past and it's worked really well. So let's just pick something here that, um, let's put something like, well, I don't know what, something simple. D1 mini case, dice tower. Let's try this. Uh, oh yeah, this looks fun. Okay. So I just dropped it in here. Let's see if it's going to load it or if I need to import, I might need to import, choose a file. Yeah, okay. Choose a file. So we're going to put this here. Great. We're going to import this ax. So this is an STL file now that I'm importing it. It's really good, but you have to convert it. Okay. This converts it as well, James, this, this converts it as well. Takes a minute. I used to use the first thing that I ever used to try and modify STL files was uh, Google SketchUp. It was horrible. <laughs> it was horrible. Basically, explodes the this 3D model into a bunch of lines, and then you have to try and go in and modify the lines. So it, it was really bad. It was really bad. Yegi is a good search engine for 3D models that works better than Thingiverse Search, does it? <clears throat> Do not connect USB cable without disabling the five volt line. It will blow up your 3D printer motherboard and quite possibly whatever you connect. Oh boy. Wow. For any CR6 SE users. Oh, that's crazy. Wow. I'm surprised this hasn't loaded this yet. Maybe this axe file was too big. While that's trying to load, <laughs> let's talk about, uh, so two other software that I would recommend. Fusion 360 is probably the one you should learn. Um, if you, if you want to do it the more, um, uh, I guess the way that 
the way that um, draftsmen would do it, right? How do you turn that off? Which part? Oh, how do you turn off the thing about uh, connecting the uh, connecting the um, USB cable? I don't know. Uh, Fusion 360. Let's just try it. So Fusion 360, I, I I've gone back and forth with about the the pricing. It's it's free trial, and then what do you have to do? You have to like say that you're using say that you're using it for school or something like that in order to not have to pay for it. I can't remember now. I think that's what I had to do initially. But Fusion 360 does have a web-based um, web uh, system for modeling, which is what I would recommend you use because it's a lot of, there's a lot of people um, or a lot of places you might want to use it. That's what happens to me. I'm on a laptop or I'm on my phone or I'm sitting at the computer here and I want to work on a specific model. So I need my, my drafting software to be web-based. The old Fusion 360 was not web-based, and so I, I started learning how to use it, and then I kind of gave it up. Um, but anyways, Fusion 360 is probably the most popular and probably the most powerful and probably what you should use if you want an update from Tinkercad. You keep calling Tinkercad Thingiverse? Do I, Cy? Or did I mean Thingiverse? Uh, maybe I meant Thingiverse. Maybe I meant Tinkercad. I don't even know anymore. <laughs> anyways. Uh, so if I was going to start over, I would probably start using Fusion 360. Now, a lot of you have heard me say before, uh, what I actually use is Onshape. And that's just because somebody a couple years ago, a friend of mine said you should start using Onshape. And so I tried Onshape and that's what I learned how to use. And so that's what I use. And I, and rather than trying to learn Fusion 360, I've just been, I just keep going to Onshape. Onshape is totally free. Um, the only limitation is that if you make a model, it be, it's public and you, you don't get to hold it privately. So if you had any ideas of patenting anything, you wouldn't want to use, you wouldn't want to use, uh, on shape, um, because it would be public and then instantly it would not be patentable. Okay. What do I use a 3d printer for the most? Still not, uh, convinced to spend so much, just, uh, prototype a few cases for DIY projects. Yeah. So I use it for a ton of things. <laughs> here's, here's some examples. My, my mom gave me, so my mom moved in, um, Grandma Z's. She moved in down the road here. So she's only a few miles away from us now. And she had a cookie jar lid that was broken and she needed another one. She's like, I need, I need a, a, a lid for my cookie jar thing. So I was like, okay. So I grabbed the one that she had. And I brought it home and I modeled it up. I measured it, modeled it up and printed her out a couple piece of cake, right? I also use it. Well, I don't use the 3D printer for this, but I am using uh, Fusion or up on shape to to draw up the Hobbit door and how I want the, the Hobbit door to work for our Hobbit hole up at Aidendale, right? Um, you can see here I used it to make some mounts for the TV in the RV. So the, the RV that we bought had an old TV in it. And, uh, I wanted to replace it with a new light, better TV. Uh, so I did, and I needed some way to mount it. It needed different legs. It needed different, uh, little clips for the corners to keep it from rattling around. So boom, I went in here and modeled up some, uh, RV TV mounts and printed them out. All of our Permatrack, Permatrack is all designed in Onshape. Um, what else have we been doing? Well, we make, I do make little project boxes. I've got a pop filter on my microphone and I made a, a mount for it here. I've made lots of curtain motors, uh, you know, designed lots of little parts, a shelf, bump, uh, bumper diffusers, light diffusers for my bug. Um, so I do a lot of stuff. I, I did model up how my, how I was going to do the contactor arm on the bug. So I used, it's not a 3d printing project, but I used 3d modeling to figure out how I wanted my, uh, rocker arm to work for the contactor for the bug. So I use it for, for a lot of stuff. It's pretty much just, I, I look at something that I need in the, in the world <laughs> and I think, okay, let me see if I can find it. So I go to Thingiverse and I search for it. If I can find it, I print it. If I can't quite find it or I don't quite find what I want, then I model it and print it. Okay. Fusion is free as long as it's not for commercial use. Okay. Good. It used to be you had to be a student. And so I, I couldn't keep it for free. 
that was a while ago. All right. Uh, so those are the software I use. Um, how they work, you know, we've talked a little bit about how they work in the past. I showed you Tinkercad. You basically take a model and you start taking pieces away from it or you add a piece onto it, right? That's a different shape. Um, something like Onshape or Fusion, Fusion 360, it's really a series of 2D sketches. So you take a, a, a 2D drawing, basically, and you put the lines and the circles and the arcs and things where you want them, and then you extrude it into a 3D model. And then you take another sketch on a different plane and you draw it up in 2D and then you extrude it. And you may minus, you know, you may subtract some part of the initial model or you may add some other parts. So that's basically the way that Fusion 360 and Onshape and sort of the more traditional drafting style uh, softwares work. Whereas uh, Tinkercad is really just, you know, you, you plop in a, a blob and you carve at it. Okay. Cheers, fellas. Very helpful. See you later, 3 or, or you're not leaving, are you? <laughs> I'll be using my 3D printer to make elbows for Schedule 40 piping to hold my Merry Christmas banner. Nice. Look, I've actually, I've done some stuff I got too. Look, I've got a shower head holder. In, uh, in Zoe's bathroom, the girl's bathroom, there's a shower head. And it has, uh, it's, it should, it's supposed to be just handheld, but she wanted it to stay on the shower curtain. So I had to model something up that would hold this fancy shower head and clip to the curtain rod. So I did. <laughs> Resin, very messy. Oh, yes. I'm going to buy my first 3D printer. Resin or filament? Definitely filament. Yeah, Baz, definitely filament first. Uh, resin is great. It's got, but it's a very specific use case and it is very messy. So I would definitely recommend you spend a lot of time with a filament printer first before you get into resin. The only, the only reason that I would suggest maybe starting with resin is if your absolute positive main purpose is to make like little game pieces, right? Like little models for D and D or something like that. But everything else that you're going to want, uh, you're going to, you're going to want a, a filament printer first to learn how to do it. First time on the stream. What is a hologram fan? Nice segue. Okay. We're going to leave the, the Ender three. Uh, talk for now, and we are going to move on. Oh, there's the axe head. Oops, and I just turned it off. Oh well. <laughs> the axe head finally loaded uh, into Tinkercad, and then I got rid of it. Okay, we talked about chairs. Chairs are going away. And we have talked about the 3D printer. That's going away. Here is the hologram fan. Okay. Find most 3D printed models are not strong. I'm always afraid. Like for example, with a wall mount. So Bossman, good, good question. Good comment. I will say something else about that. Now, the reason that I have two 3D printers is because one of them has a macho grande nozzle on it. So the nozzle on my Lulzbot is a 1.2 millimeter nozzle. So it puts out a fat stream of filament. And what happens when you do that, besides that it makes big things fast, right? You print big things faster, but it also has more surface area for each line of filament to attach to the next line of filament. So instead of being, you know, some fraction of a millimeter, it's 1.2 millimeters. Every time it lays down a layer and comes back across it, it's 1.2 millimeters. So you can have something that's one wall thick and it's going to be 1.2 millimeters thick. And that when you get PLA at 1.2 millimeters like that, it's really strong. It's hard to break. In fact, if you use a, a, an, an extruder end uh, or a, a hot end, a, a nozzle that's that big, be very careful about your, um, your uh, what do you call the, um, oh, come on, the stuff you put underneath the, oh my gosh, I can't think of it. Um, Support. <laughs> Thank you. Be very careful with the support structures because your support structures end up being really, really strong. Really strong. That is a big difference, right? It's three times as big as this nozzle on the ender. The ender nozzle is 0.4 millimeters, and that's pretty standard. Uh, and it's so it's 1.2 millimeters. Now, if you have a different 3D printer 
or what you could do, you don't have to have two separate 3D printers. You can get a different extruder and you can change them on one 3D printer to another. But to be honest, as cheap as 3D printers are now, it's like I have a 0.4 millimeter nozzle for my Lulzbot that I could just swap out. But I would rather just have, you know, for 200 bucks, get an Ender 3. And now I've got something that's already set up and ready to go. And I want to make really small things. When you want to make really big things, um, I can do it on my Lulzbot. And it prints out big and strong. That stuff is sturdy as can be. It is not, it is not going to break, you know? It is really strong. I agree with you that a lot of times the stuff that comes out of the 0.4 millimeter nozzle, even with PLA, which is usually not as brittle as ABS, it still is hard to um, to to get it straight, to get it uh, structurally sound, to get it functional structurally. Okay, only getting buffer. Oh no, Neil, no. Looking for a new extra 3D printer. The Ender 3, my friend, Ender 3 version two. That's what I got as my second one. And it was by choice. It wasn't just because that's what Banggood said they would send me. It was because that was what I wanted. And I asked them and they said yes, but um, I would have bought one with my own money anyways. Okay, now to the hologram. So has anybody, have any of you guys seen this hologram thing? Have you seen one work? Have you seen one in action? Um, I mean, basically they really do. This is a, this is hard to show you here, but I will show you on my, I'll show you my real one up here. We'll show you. But basically here's the idea, right? So it's a fan and it has a string of LEDs. I don't know how many LEDs this one has. It probably has, I don't know, 150 somewhere in there LEDs, right? It's a lot. They're, they're really tiny and they're like one millimeter apart. Okay. Poor setting dramatically. Okay. Oh, and, and, and good, good point. Will back to the 3d printing thing. Will's bringing up, uh, how your, what settings you use. You can also, uh, just, uh, adjust them to make something stronger rather than weaker. Anyways, so this hologram fan, um, they're not cheap, but what they do is super cool. So they have a software where you put in a movie, a video file, and it, it calculates how fast the fan is spinning, where each of those LEDs are at a certain millisecond in time and makes it the right color to show an image. So what you end up with is an image that looks like it's floating in the air because you've got this black fan that is just spinning and you can't see the fan. Um, but you, what you see is this image floating in space. So let me show you, let me demonstrate for you. I will try to point my webcam, my desk cam up there at it. So let's see how we can do this. I'm gonna do some unicorns too for people who are joining the stream for the first time. There it is. Okay. It's kind of upside down and sideways, but you get the idea. All right. Various opinions differ. Oh, sorry. Ask uh, my budget. Third, fifth, three prints, 600 USD max. Oh, man. Oh, man. 600 bucks. You got a lot of, you got a lot of choices. Um, what do you, what would you guys say? This, this CR6, CR10, something like that. Do you want big things or small things? What do you need? Yes, you absolutely may. Thank you, buddy. Oh, yeah. How many did you get? She's still going. It's great. It's good, good. Okay. Are we almost out of the soap dishes? I think there might be more. Okay. Okay, I'll get some more. <laughs> okay. So anyways, that's it. You can see it up there. That's the fan. All right. Now let me turn it on. And it's got inside of it a, um, it's got inside of it a, a uh, demo right now. Okay. But I think we'll get to modify that. We're going to play with that. That's one of the things I want to do. Okay. It's got an RF remote. This particular one has an RF remote. You know what that means? No, you, where does my mind go as soon as I see one of these? Home assistant, right? Because with this, with the uh, RF bridge, the Sonoff RF bridge and pore stitch, I can absolutely control this thing with home assistant. I haven't done it yet, but I'm absolutely positive that I can, I can turn this thing on and off with home assistant. Now, that's all it does is turn on and off so far. If there are other functions that you can do with the remote or through Wi-Fi, because it also has a Wi-Fi connection, I haven't completely uh, been able to um, explore the possibilities of the Wi-Fi capabilities or what you use it for. You might be able to just drag and drop files. I think that's what you do with it, with the Wi-Fi. But the on and off, you do through this. So here we go. We're going to turn it on. 
it'll be interesting to see how this works with, uh, you know, the video and the frame rates and stuff like that. But it might. So there it is. Right. So you've got this cube floating in space and we'll let that go for a few minutes. It's probably going to be a little loud. You can hear it. You can hear it. Um, I can hear it. Certainly. It's a lot louder than the 3D printer. <laughs> but if you put this thing like I'm, I'm imagining that as part of my Christmas display or my my holiday display, I'm going to hang this thing out the window right here by my office and display on the back of my on my um, house this. Right. How cool is that? Turn it on. Boom. No more stream. <laughs> so now it's showing some headphones. And the remote turns on the buffering. <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> In the meantime, let's have another Dr. Pepper. Buffering, buffering, buffering. I'm so sorry. So, so sorry. I wish I knew what to do to fix it. It's funny. It doesn't turn off the lights. Oh, yeah. Turn off the lights. Whoa. There's a couple of really cool things. I'll let this, oh, Will's page. Sorry, Will, I don't think I have my lights on, but I see that you wanted to page me. What's up, my friend? Buffering. I need one like five feet, right? So look at that, so cool. Now you can see, I, I can see that on the camera, you're picking up more of a frames, right? You can see a little bit of the fan. Here, live, I don't see that at all. I mean, maybe if you really look, uh, your eye might be able to detect something like that, but oh, Will was trying to tell me to turn off the lights. Okay, good. <laughs> Isn't that thing cool? The thing is awesome. So we're Mario's going to come up here in a minute too. So I'm just going to let this go. Smooth stream, no buffering. Dang. Well, sorry guys. I wish I knew what uh, wish I knew what the issue was. Um, um, I've got the. I've been waiting. I was trying to do it. I assume the hologram isn't washed out in person. Uh, this one, that, that particular image is a little washed out. So it's got a few, um, a few things about colors that it can't do. And one of the things it can't do is it, it can't do dark colors very well, which makes a lot of sense. And so you have to really pick your models. So, oh no, it's not washed out nearly as much. I see what you're saying. Yeah. When I look at the camera, it is definitely washed out. When I look at this guy, he's nice and yellow. So maybe what I need to do is, uh, maybe I can do something with this. See if I can auto exposure. No, that's not helping. So that's like a diamond ring floating in space. Low light compensation. Maybe we can turn that off. Yeah, this thing's just not. This camera's just not very good for this white balance. Yeah. So there's a Rubik's cube. Yeah, it's not nearly as washed out in, in person as it is up there. Um, you can get something similar to the bicycle wheels. Exactly. Keister or Keister. Yes, that's funny. Keister. <laughs> Anyways. Um, yeah, I made it worse. <laughs> Big surprise. Yes, but it's the same principle as those lights you can put on the bicycle wheels. Same principle, right? It is. This thing is kind of expensive. This thing is kind of expensive. So, you know, it depends on your budget. Um, there's a watch. I'm waiting for Mario. Mario comes out and I think Mario's my favorite. Set the exposure lower. Okay. There's a smiley face. Oh, it looks so bad on here. Exposure lower. Oh, now look at that though. Now it's looking horrible. Like, okay, that's probably about as good as we're going to get. How would you control it with X lights? Um, so I don't know, but I would love to learn how I would love to find out. So there is, we have here the instruction manual. And once we're done with the demo here, I'll let the demo play for a few more minutes. And then we're going to dig into this and we're going to learn some things together about how this thing works, because I have not completely cracked how this thing works. Um, you could do it with a fan. What's the refresh rate and frequency? I don't know. We'll look at this and see. We'll look at this and see. There's Nemo floating around. 
it's just so cool that like I can see the wall behind him, right? That's what makes it really cool is that you can see whatever's behind him. So awesome. I mean, I, I, I've, I've been asking, I was asking bang good buddy Woody for one of these things like a year ago. And so I finally got one really excited. Love it. I think what you can do, what we're going to try and do here in a minute is we'll take out, there's an SD card in there. You take out the SD card. The SD card has some software on it. We'll put that software on the computer. We'll try and take a video file, maybe three eighths dancing squirrel and put it up there and see how it plays. What do I run my home assistant on? Neil's asking. It's on a uh, nook. I think you can, there's a, there's a command. Somebody can do it probably and show you what it is. There's Mario. Okay, so Mario does look a little washed out still on the camera. I promise he's not nearly as washed out. He's not washed out at all in person. And then here's a little Christmas wreath. I mean, you get some good 3D models. It's pretty awesome. Does it have a network? It does. It does have a network. So I'm going to turn it off now. Merry Christmas. Ho, ho, ho. Okay, turn it off. And then I'll turn the lights back on in the office. And we'll turn off that camera that's pointing up there for now. Okay, so it does have a network, a Wi-Fi connection, but I don't know what it does exactly, okay? I, too many things going on for me to have dug super deeply into what this thing can do, so we're going to do it now. Got to go. All right, see you, Steve. Thanks for being here. Take care. Creative needs to make some 3D animations for the fan. He's made me some. I just need to actually use them. <laughs> Is it visible with the lights on as well? Yes, it is visible with the lights on as well. I mean, I can turn it on real quick again and you can see. I actually had the lights on at first, so it's plenty bright enough to, to see with the lights on as well. And that's a super washed out image, but that's my camera more than anything else. Okay. Oh no, what did I hit? Okay, good. Okay. Dynamite's got to go to bed. Good night, buddy. Have a, have a sweet dreams. <laughs> See you later, man. <laughs> Maybe an ESP 3266. All right, let's look through the instructions here. We're going to find out some stuff. All right. Uh, so software. Um, before you use the software, please prepare your first video. Your video better design as following. Oh, English is bad. I, I can't blame them. I mean, if you imagine if I tried to write a a manual in Chinese. So, all right. Um, this is what they tell you to do so that you have a good video. Make a pure black background. Okay. Uh, you can use MP4, AVI, RMVB, or GIF video formats. Okay. The display, well, it says four, oh, it says you should use 450 by 450 pixels as your, uh, video display. It does say it could be 720 by 720. 10 to 15 seconds, video time suggested. Uh, it says JPEG and PNG are okay as long as they have a black background. Okay. I don't know why. I mean, I guess you could have just a picture. It would still be cool, but it's really, really cool when it moves. All right. The software is used on Windows 7 or 10. Hologram device only reads the bin file. Other formats cannot be read directly. Also, please noted the bin file cannot open. Okay. Copy the software from the SD card to your computer, then open the software. Let's do that. Okay. This SD card is in here somewhere. I remember seeing it when I put the thing together. You want to make sure you mount this thing really well to your uh, wall or whatever because it can go flying. Oh, it's up here. Oh, the SD card is up here. Okay. So you see where that SD card is? It's up here. All right. Pop that SD card out. The first couple times I did this, I know what you guys, I know what you guys, you know what I did. Oh, Jaws 3 trailer, 3D trailer from Back to the Future 2. Yes, that's right. That tries to eat Marty. <laughs> um. I'm going to zoom in on this so you guys can see the controllers and stuff on this and, and how close together these LEDs are. Um, what was I going to say though? Oh, when I first was trying this, I was holding it in my hand. Don't, don't do that. <laughs> Fortunately, it didn't hit me. I would expect like if it were to hit you or it were to hit, if it hits 
if it were to hit something, uh, my guess is it, you would probably put it out of commission. It would probably throw something off balance and it would be done for. So I would really, really be careful about, about doing that. Let's see. Didn't recognize the SD card that way. It's not recognizing it. So maybe I need to use a little one of these things so it'll go in an USB. I don't know why that would matter, but sometimes it seems to work better if I use it as a USB instead of directly as an SD. Check your PM and Discord, sorry. Time to send me the software. Oh, oh, for sure. Oh, oh, make an automation live. Oh man, okay, I'll try and send it to you. Let's see if we can get it off of this uh, SD card right now. All right, Blade Runner had some nice holographic advertisements too. Oh, there it goes. Did it finally just pop up? The USB drive. There it is. Okay, here it is. So here are so here are the files that they include. Okay, so it's just these bin files. So this software is going to make these bin files. So if you want the app, 3D Hologram, APK, Hologram Software Download Address, Instruction Manual. Oh, cool. So there's a PDF of the Instruction Manual. Okay. Very nice. Okay. I'm actually going to. Uh, this is the program hologram zip. Okay, so what does it say we do? We just put it on the computer. Double click the exe below. Which file is it? Copy the software. It'll be. I don't know which software it is. I'm just, I'm just going to poke around here for a minute because I want to see what's in here. So this is what it runs, right? So this is the software. So this program, I think what's in here is what's running on this um, computer that's in this little guy. So I think what we want is probably this. So we'll download, we'll put this into our downloads folder. Okay, and then K1Y. Okay, we're going to program. Here we go. We're going to unzip this. Oh, no. Oh, here's the exe. Yeah, okay. Extract all. Yes. Okay. Exe. There it goes. Okay, sweet. Um, let me see. You know what, creative? Let me see if I can drop this to you. And that way, it would, it would be so awesome for you to do that as a live stream. Is that what you're talking about? That would be so cool. I think we'd all love to see that. Okay, so I think it's this zip file here. So I'm going to see if I can just drag it and drop it to you. Oops. Okay. I'm going to get to you. Drag and drop three of the zip file. Probably will say I can't. Oh, yeah. There it goes. Ooh, it's it's sending to you, creative. There you go. Also lost the live action ghost in the shell. Oh, all the live action ghost in the shell has some advertisements. Okay, cool. All right, so let's go here. So let's look at this. Oh, no, the instructions are all in Chinese. Dang it. There's a way to change that. All right, let's see. Um, I have got to wear glasses. There's no way I cannot wear glasses. I need to put, like, some of these things up there, too, don't you think? Like, put some of this up there. <laughs> all right. Um, oh, you can set the link ang the language to English by clicking on the red icon. I don't see no red icon. Right here. Language. Oh, there you go. Okay, click that and it changes to English. Yay, thank you. All right, select the video file from your PC. Okay. I guess I can just drop it in there. I don't see a button that says import. So let's just find... I know I have in here uh, files that Creative has made for me in the past. So let's go there. We're going to go to Documents. Is that where it is? I think it's in Pictures. Yes. Yes. 
Um, we'll find that dancing squirrel. Where are you, dancing squirrel? Where are you? Is it here? We could do oh the Zigbee. <laughs> I wish I knew where I put those things. Maybe they're in downloads. This is what now the part remember remember how I was so prepared at the beginning of this stream? Yeah, that's over. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Squirrel. Find all the places where there might be a squirrel. There we go. We can stop already. Stop. All right. Squirrel dance. Let's try this one. Intro squirrel transparent. Oh, it's a dot mov. Okay. Well, let's try this one. It's an MP4. Oh, that won't work either. Who? <laughs> okay. Then let's try that GIF. Let's just go back and get the GIF uh, for something to try. I wonder what else. I sure I have some ABIs. Certainly, I have some. We can try this one. Oh, it won't let me do that either. It says it can take a GIF. Maybe I'm doing something wrong. Card format language rename. Lux adjust. File upload. File encode. Dun 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 dun. dun. Hmm. Let's find us an AVI file. Screenshots. I thought Stream Deck had some stuff in it. PNG. Where are all my. Maybe it's an OBS output. These are all MOV files. I thought it said it could do MOVs, did it not? MP4 AVI. Okay. Well, I just tried an MP4. Convert it to a GIF. Where is but maybe what that's about? Um, base function starting code file upload. Maybe that's what they mean. Network disconnect. Okay, that's not going to work. And function language card format. Huh? Top right Wi-Fi maybe. I think this is to connect it to the device. Um, I don't know. Instructions are they and best. Uh, file upload. Yeah, when I do that, it says network disconnect. Start encode. Stop encode. Like I, I'm expecting like in import or something right here. First, need to connect device to Wi-Fi. Hmm. The Wi-Fi is here. Hologram. I can connect, but it's, I'm going to need a password. Probably in here. Select the video file from your PC. Upload finish. It must be upload. Cannot connect. Great. Network disconnect. Import video. I don't see an import video button. Plug it back in the card and upload the file. Oh, yeah, that's probably true. So, yeah, it's got to have the file in it. I bet you that's what it is. It's got to have the it's got to have the SD card in it in order to function at all. So we're going to export this. Checked. Okay. 
Yep, that's it. Also won't upload without the SD card in. Yep, I think you're right. Took me a minute to figure that out. Okay, now that's back in. Let's hope that when I plug it in, it won't it won't turn on. Take one of my fingers off. Done, I think. Oh, look at you. Oh, see, that was what I was afraid of. Be careful when you turn it on. Ah! Ah! Cool. Hey, baby. So, so good enough's here. Can we start over? Yeah, for you, buddy, you bet. Oh, okay. Yeah, we're playing with it. We gotta be really careful we don't hit anything with it. I don't want to kill anything. All right, there we go. Okay, well, 3 Ative has come through with a video file already. So let's put this into pictures. Pictures, 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 pictures. I have two pictures folders. Okay, and then we will squirrel.bin, extract. Okay. Okay, now, let's see if we can upload, we can upload this. Let's see if we can upload that. Go back here. Pictures. Did it end up in this pictures folder? Or do I have two pictures folders? It's SQ, what do you call it, SQI? Only had the Ender 3 experimental available, nothing to share, it's default, it's very small changes. Let's go to this software and try and connect to Wi Fi. If this doesn't work, I know I can, we can put it on the SD card, can't connect. That may be my network problems. I've had serious problems connecting to, yeah, it's not going to work. Serious problems connecting to access points like that. So we're going to take this SD card out and we're just going to manually put the file on there. Yes, you should be able to upload the files through Wi-Fi, it appears. Um, but yeah, I'm not able to do that currently. All right, so we're going to put it right in here and we're actually going to move all these. I'm going to grab all these and I'm going to cut them. We'll make a new folder. I wonder if that will put them. I can still play them. Hello, where's my new folder? Hello, new folder. Man, it takes a while. New folder. Man, why is taking a new folder takes so long? Windows is messed up. Cheese is waiting for shipping products from Ali. It's driving you crazy. There it goes. There's a new folder finally. Cheese. Okay. Demos. It's killing me. Windows is so awful. I blame Windows. It's probably the SD card. It's probably because it's just a Pretty cheap SD card. Oh my word. Because I changed the name of it and I have to wait. Squirrel.rar was on your PC. Yes. I'm putting it on this. I'm putting it on this here now. Okay. So what I'm going to do is put it right here. Like now I don't remember where I put it. Pictures. Oh no, it wasn't under pictures because there was two pictures.
and it's probably in our downloads. We're getting to that time of the stream where my eyes are starting to bug out. But we're going to have a good time. We're going to find this. Uh, we're going to get this on here, and it's going to be awesome. Are you kidding me? Oh, a dance. Oh, here's another one. There it is. Why is that not? I'm going to put it in this other pictures instead. There's a file that's open in. Oh. <laughs> Why do I have two pictures? I don't know. Wait, that's not the one. Here's a dancing one. Wait, where'd the dancing one go? There we go. Now I'll be able to find it. Okay, here we go. Now we're in business. Extract this. Yes. Great. And then we're going to grab the other one. Probably do need to refresh. How much do you guys love watching me stumble through this? You guys all yelling? Check PM for another file. I just saw it. Yep. Uh, didn't I? Oh, it's that's downloads. That's why I'm in the wrong folder. SQI raw. There we go. Extract this one again. This time we'll put it in the right place so I don't lose it forever and ever. Now we can copy it onto the disk. So we're going to take sqi.bin, we're going to put it on the removable disk. Boop. And we're going to take SQI dance and we're going to put it on the removable disk. Boop. Sweet. And we go to the removable disk. There they are. And now we're going to eject the removable disk. Eject. But currently in use. Excuse me. And Just had to finish copying them or whatever. Okay, so now we're going to do this all together. I'm just going to go ahead and put this in, hang it back up on the wall, and then turn it on. Okay, now turn on the camera for you all to see it. There it is. Turn off the lights. Hope this works, Creative. <laughs> and here we go. Let's see what happens. Oh, there they are. The dancing squirrels. <laughs> There's a whole bunch of them all dancing. And they're wearing masks and gloves. <laughs> that is awesome. Now that'll probably play. I wonder how long that's going to play. How long is that video file? The image is flipped on Twitch. It's also flipped on the stream. Uh, yeah. Oh, there's the guy at the beginning. Oh my gosh, that's the best. That's the guy from the beginning. Look at him go. It looks gorgeous. I know you guys can't see it nearly as well as I can, but it's awesome. Oh my gosh. Creative, thank you, brother. And then because it's just those two files in that folder, it's just going to keep cycling through those two. What? That is fantastic. So, Creative, we got to sh... Oh, wow, it's buffering again. It's because I turned that dang fan on. Why is it upside down? It's because my camera's upside down. Because I usually use this camera for um, showing things on my desk. That's why it's upside down. All right. Pretty sweet. The dance one works perfectly. Twitch does not like that at all, huh? <laughs> uh, so, anyways, you know what I could do, too? Uh, did I... Let me get out of here. Never mind. Never mind. So, 
anyways, that is the, um, that is the, a hologram fan. So that's what a hologram fan does for you. And it's awesome, right? It's awesome. So I still have to work on how, you know, I'm going to work on some details of how I make that happen. I'm not going to, I don't want to try and fumble through too many things on the stream. <laughs> Fumbling through things on the stream is already enough of what I do. Um, but three eight was able to do it pretty dang quick. So, uh, and then I, I'm sure that the reason that I can't connect to it is, is almost positively because of this. I've been having this issue with connecting to access points in my, in my, um, house and i don't know what exactly the setting is in my router stuff but anyways all right three eight have just subscribed or three eight sorry what are we fixing today sir good enough to subscribe again he gets the unicorn farts just for you buddy this is pricey this is pricey um but it's awesome i i really think it's cool so i'm gonna get a, got a lot of good use out of it um if you've got a couple hundred bucks and you you just want something fun to show the grandkids or whatever this is the thing it's pretty awesome I think late to the show. What's the verdict on the gaming chair? So the verdict on the gaming chair is I showed four different chairs that I've owned and everything from, you know, $400 verdict gear chair, a couple of others that were, well, one of them that was like 200 and something that was the uh, autonomous brand. And then another one that is the respawn. And then this, this Blitzwolf one and the Blitzwolf one, I think if you use the link in the description, I think it's $105 right now. That, that's what the link said. Um, you know, the heading of the link says $105. When I clicked it, it said 114. So I don't know exactly what the price is, but that's a really good price. And the, and the verdict on this chair is I like it and I would definitely buy it again. Well, I would buy it. I didn't buy it. Um, and what I liked about it is the firmness. It's firm enough that you can sit in it for a long time. The $400 Vertigear chair that I had was really firm. And at first I thought, oh gosh, this is hard. But then after you sit in it for hours, it's a lot better than when you sit in a really soft one. So the, the respawn chair that I had was really soft. And so I sat in that chair and gosh, after an hour or something, you know, you start really, it, it hurts. You have to switch positions a lot. So the, a little bit firmer seat is actually better. And this Blitzwolf has a nice firm seat. Um, it doesn't come with very good instructions and it comes completely disassembled. So the Blitzwolf one, part of the reason it's cheap, I think, is because you have to put it together. <laughs> um, but anyways, it's good. Uh, it's, it's definitely a good chair. And then we talked about the version two of the Ender 3. And uh, probably the best thing about it is the silent, um, the silent, uh, whatchamacallums, um, stepper motor drivers. So the silent stepper motor drivers. And, uh, and then this, this fan thing is pretty awesome. So that's what we talked about today so far. That worked. Subscribe. Nice. <laughs> That Threeative thing worked. All right. Go to Threeative's site. So the stepper drivers are TMC 2020, 2208s, I believe. Is it napping? Is there a tw difference between 2208 and 2209? The ones for this, um, the, the version two of the Ender 3 are, yes, so one, one variety or another of those silent stepper motors, TMC something something. Yeah. And they're pretty awesome. So that's my obligation. I have fulfilled my obligation to Banggood. Uh, I do appreciate them uh, always supporting me and giving me lots of fun toys to play with. Um, so support them if you feel inclined. Um, and now we have 25 or so minutes left. I will be, I will open myself to whatever questions, concerns, issues, cheese days, cheese mace you have. <laughs> uh, so you have to wait for Windows search to show up. I want to check this app out. Oh, cool. Thank you. Thank you, honey. H money. Sensorless homing. Ooh. So I'm going to go to the ask channel now. I'm going to look at the ask channel here and we'll ask, we'll look at the questions that people have posted in the ask channel. And thank you as always to my mods, Blade, uh, Sir Good Enough. I know, um, Will's been, been busy today as well creative and others. Thank you guys for helping me out and helping out the stream today as always. All right. Live stream questions. Let's see what we got today. <laughs> Blades question is when is the next node, node red live stream? 
for Christmas. We will do a Node Red live stream as one of the 12 days of Christmas, Blade, I promise. Okay. Uh, and then we answered this question on the stream. Baz asked, um, I'm going to buy my first 3D printer. Should I get resin or filament? And the answer to that is hands down filament. Absolutely filament. Thank you, Craig, for subscribing. Absolutely hands down. Filament is what you want to start with. And then he said his budget was about $600 and there's so many choices. Which one do I want? I think the thing that you need to ask uh, about which one do you want is uh, for your 600 bucks because you can get a lot of them for 600 bucks. There's a lot of variety. Um, you need to ask how big of a bed do you want? Uh, if you want, a, I think the biggest bed, is it the 10 guys? This, the CR10 that has the biggest bed right now for that 300 for, I mean, 600 bucks is a lot. You can get a really nice one. Look at this. Uh, this is the Ender 5. Okay, so here's the Ender 5. Look at that roll cage. My gosh, that thing's going to sort of be apocalypse. I definitely, the Ender brand, you're not going to go wrong with Ender printers. Everybody is loving Ender printers. You're not going to go wrong there at all. Um, there are others that are probably fine, and they're all probably made in the similar fashions, at least. Uh, here's the CR10. So here's the CR10 version 3 upgrade. So that one's going to have a really big bed, if I recall. I mean, this thing has got a print area that is macho grande. What I've noticed is when you have a tiny nozzle like these, printing something really big takes forever. It can take days. And one of the really bad things about it is if you are 30 hours into a 36 hour print and it goes bad, it get, you know, the nozzle gets off or something, you've wasted 30 hours and all that stuff. So I, tr I don't print big things with my small nozzle. That's just me. If you want really cool, big models, that's what you have to do. And plenty of people do it without having a problem and, and all that. I've just had a couple of them screw up on me over the, this was a long time ago, but that that's kind of shied me away from the big beds. So I don't know that you need a big bed, um, but if you want a big bed, uh, the CR10 or this, I guess the Ender Pro, this Ender 5, this thing looks, this thing looks wicked durable. Look at that thing. So yeah, that's going to be, that's going to be pretty stable. That's awesome. What else? What other Enders? Enders? Oh, this one is a cage on it. The Ender 6 upgrade. And then, so the CR6 SE, what is it? What is it about the CR6 SE? That seems to be the one that is very popular right now too, right? CR6 SE. Yes, and lots of great uh, 3D printer talk on the Discord channel, 3D printing. Thank you, sir, good enough. Absolutely right. Has anyone tried FL Sun QQS? I don't know what that is, Don. Is that a, um, is that a printer? ¿Cuál es la criatura más floja del mundo? Yo. No. <laughs> what is the creature that is the laziest in the world? Tucker wants to know. It's got to be the sloth. Is it not? Or is this some kind of joke? <laughs> cheese days or cheese maze? <laughs> uh, ask. A power failure forced me to start from scratch when I, uh, pro when I went the Proxmox way. How can I back up Proxmox and Home Assistant so I never have to do this again? Uh, Dietrich, so um, I'm not as good at backing up Proxmox. There are ways you can do um, snapshots in Proxmox and copy them off of your drive. I don't know what those are. Uh, I would go with, I would talk to Whiskers and Tollbringer. Maybe some of these guys are also very good at that. I'm not. Um, but what I will tell you is I do have a video, which is still valid, which is, that's, that's rare. <laughs> I have a video that's kind of old, that is still valid. That is how you set up backing up your, um, backing up your home assistant onto Google Drive so that you never lose anything ever again. And I haven't, I, I haven't, my current setup is not much different than what I did in this video from who knows when it is. I cannot find it now. You guys know when it was? Was it really last year before Christmas? No way. Let's just search. When all else fails, use the search bar, right? When all else fails, use the search bar. Search Google Drive. There it is. 
right here. Never lose homeless to config again. Um, I believe this is still the app that I'm using. There were two. I think this is the one that I'm still using. So there you go. All right. It's all right. It's all right. Go with a Prusa. Kevin says go with the Prusa. All right, Mark. Thank you very much. Thanks for being faithful. Mark Sutton. Appreciate it, Bingo. Realistically, I just want 200 by 200 millimeters for project boxes and stuff. Smaller one with more upgrades. Yeah. I think Baz, I think that's a very good, I think that's a good choice. I, this is me personally. I would love to hear what everybody else has to say. Please, please pipe in and give Baz your recommendations and your suggestions. But an Ender 3, an Ender 3 with a bunch of upgrades is a very good way to spend 600 bucks. Absolutely. What kind of upgrades? Things like the, that bed leveling, um, maybe a different, you know, a different bed or probably go with the, if you can get a version two pro, that will have a lot of the upgrades already. It'll have the it'll have the silent stepper motor drivers. It will have an upgraded power supply. Um, I don't remember what all the other things are. Let's look and see. Ender three Pro V two. Thanks for subscribing, everybody. I missed who that was. It was too fast. All right. Oh, here we go. Danger Mouse. How's it going, my old destiny buddy? How you been, man? You playing Beyond Light? I'm not. I haven't. I, I I look at it and think, oh, that is so awesome. I can't I can't do it. <laughs> Maybe the five. You know, a five. Does the five have the same bed as the three? Maybe it maybe it does. Maybe just maybe a five with the um, with a bunch of upgrades would be a really good choice too. I think the nice thing about the three is it's very portable. You can really pick it up and move it around your house. It's really small and light. Um, but the five with all that extra structure is going to be really stable and uh, you won't have a lot of uh, you know, layers getting off 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 of uh, square, square and stuff. Five is a bit bigger and how it moves is different. Oh, really, Mark? Oh, OK. You know, the other thing you could do with 600 bucks is buy two. Making wax melts. She wants me to print some custom molds for her. What temperature can a 3D PLA print stand up to? Great question, Brendan. Great, great, great question. Um, and that's baby builds. Um, what? So let's see. It melts at what? 210 C. PLA is going to melt at, and it will probably start to melt lower than that, right? It comes out of the nozzle at 200 to 210 C. So yeah, I, I think I like those numbers that these guys are putting in there, 150, 160, because when you are changing filaments, I usually preheat the bed to something above 150 to 160. So I usually just kind of twist the dial. It goes up to 180 and then you can, it, it gets soft enough that you can pull it out of the nozzle. Um, oh, did somebody, did you gift him? A, did you gift him one, Mark? Is that what you did? Oh, thanks, buddy. I just caught that. Thank you, dude. Let's do this. Let's do these squirrels. For the old time sake, yeehaw! And now I have to talk over the song so that I don't get copyright infringement because fringe copyright infringements really suck. And then they take away all eight dollars that I earn from the stream. <laughs> that was fun. Mark gifted like six. Oh, Mark, you're a stud. You've done that to me before, dude. You've done that to me before. I, I will be forever in your debt. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much, Mark. Um, I I probably don't do enough for you, Mark. You t you you tell me what I can do to you for you. Uh, let's dedicate a stream to Mark's Mark's likes and avoid Mark's dislikes for a whole stream, because that's very awesome. And I appreciate it tremendously. Glass transition temp is fifty to fifty five C when it goes from hard to soft. So I would go with Pet G that has a glass transition temp of eighty C or look at heat treat PLA. So she's making wax. You said she's making wax molds. All right, Intermittent Tech just subscribed. I know that guy. I know him. I know him. <laughs> oh, it didn't work. The Unifart didn't work. Dr. Pepper. <laughs> oh, the unicorn fart. Oh, I see what you're doing. Oh, hey, baby. You know what we need? How did you say that? Because it's dream time. See? No, it's not, you don't want to get it? Okay, you don't have to. No. Well, thank you, Mark. Santa! 
Is Rarely print anything functional out of PLA. Pet G is so much more durable. That's a good, you know what, Kevin? I should try more Pet G then. I have not tried Pet G. I think I've printed one thing out of Pet G. Um, and that was just because it came with the more Struder. Thank you, Dawson. Dawson is scoring triple bonus points. Dawson knows Santa's watching, huh? <laughs> um, yeah, I know I used to print a lot of stuff out of ABS and ABS is not very durable. It, it, it stands up to heat better. So if you're going to print something that's going to like go outside or in your car and it can get really hot with the sun or whatever, uh, PLA will melt, but ABS will not. Did I say PLA? I meant ABS. ABS, ABS will not melt in your car. And so if you're going to put something outside, ABS is better. Um, but maybe pet G, maybe pet G is the best combination of them both. I found PLA when I put it in the more Struder is like bulletproof. I mean, that stuff is, that stuff is bulletproof. Wax melts when you put it on things. So at what temperature is the wax? Do you heat treat PLA? It will hold up in a car as well. Oh, cool. I didn't know that happened. How do you heat treat it? What, what does that process consist of? I, she just stole my Dr. Pepper. I stole my Dr. Pepper. Some visors for COVID with Pet G. Oh, awesome. He made a new unicorn one. You like that one? He's my, no, he's my I like, chubby. I like, I like. You like the unicorn farts? Oh, you're just trying to find out what wax melts at? My guess is the wax is going to melt at a lot lower temperature, so you would be fine with anything, pretty much. Go on. One thing I want to try that I haven't tried yet. What? I heard Pet G is stringy. Yeah. What do you guys know? Is Pet G stringy? I don't know. Good. Oh, good idea. It's always a good idea. If you need to go, go. Pet G can string, but if you tune your printer to the material, it's not really an issue. So if it's stringy, then what do you need to do? You need to like lower the temperature a little bit and increase the retraction. Is that right? TPU is super stringy. Yeah, TPU is the flexible stuff, isn't it? Stone Obscurity, you're, uh, tell me your name. Because we chatted, you did you 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 gave me um no I'm thinking salty I think I'm thinking Sai is your name Sai I know you I know you very very well and I right now I want to remember your first name and and it's escaping me Stone obscurity Pet G is the right temp and retraction that's if any material sure enough TPU is kind of like your phone covers okay. So it's not super flexible then. What is it? I've got some that's super flexible. I thought it was TPU. Maybe it's something else. Pet G is stringy if it's moist. So if you dry it in a food dryer, it will be easy to print as PLA. Oh, cool. James, how's it going, amigo? Polson's here from Denmark. Ninja Flex. I got, nin it's Ninja Flex, but Ninja Flex is a, I didn't buy Ninja Flex, the brand. I bought something else that's the same. I can't remember what it's called. So that's one thing to, to think about when you're looking at your printers too, is um, the difference between the two types of extruders. So for those guys that are, that are new to printing, I know is it Boz that's been asking about a lot of stuff. Most printers, uh, I think that most people use, and certainly the inexpensive ones, um, well, maybe it's not just inexpensive ones, but anyways, they have this kind of an extruder. And this kind of an extruder, actually, the extruder is this, is the... Um, stepper motor that's off to the side. It's not right there at the tip. And that's the, that's the motor that pushes the filament through. And what you see is this, this long tube is actually the filament or it's in, it's in a tube, uh, but that's, that's the filament. So that's a, I don't know why they call it, I mean, Bowden because it was meant by some guy named Bowden, but it should be like an indirect drive is what I would call it. But they, everybody calls it a Bowden extruder versus direct drive. Correct. And a direct drive extruder would have that stepper motor right here on top of the hot end. And the good part about that is for something like these flexible prints, the flexible filaments, you can, if you have the extruder right there, there's very little squish in those filaments. There's, there's very little room for them to squish because the extruder is pushing them right through the nozzle. I mean, there's a centimeter or two at the most between the extruder gear that's pushing the filament and the actual hot end in the nozzle. With something like this, the filament is being pushed by the extruder, you know, and it's, it's 
20, 30 centimeters away from where it's getting hot and, and getting pushed through. So, uh, it can, it can bunch up and it can, um, squeeze out for those specific types of filaments. But the downside of direct drive is it's heavy. So with a direct drive, you've got this uh, extra um, stepper motor on top of your your hot end that's actually putting out the filament. So when you get to the edge, like when you stop and it, when it makes a turn, it's got momentum, it's got mass. And so it, it just tips a little, you know, and, it, and it's not, it's it's a lot harder to, uh, make really fine edges and not have it kind of get off course because of the mass, because that thing is moving so, so much weight. So, so there's good reasons to have them both. And I fortunate enough that the first one I bought was a direct drive and the second one is a Bowden. So I have them both to, to choose from. Um, so something to think about if you're doing, and I think you can get direct drive extruders that you can just mount on one of these as well. So that's fine. And you can even get like the Titan, what is it called guys? The Titan Vol Volcano or the Titan Vulcan or something. That's this big, big 3d, uh, same as my more extruder. So with the 1.2 millimeter nozzle, uh, that you can put on these little ones as well. If you wanted to make bigger, stronger, faster parts. Oh, and Kevin converted the Ender 3 to direct drive. Exactly like we we're saying. Which is why I said, if you got the money, just get the Prusa and you're ready to go. So is the Prusa a direct drive? The E3D Volcano. That's right, Nappin. That's right. I was seriously considering one of those um, before I got my Morse Streeter. And I got the Morse Streeter just because it fit right onto the, right onto the, the um, lull spot that I have. But the Morse Streeter by itself was like 300 and something bucks. So there's nothing cheap about buying stuff from Morse Streeter. Sweet. Turgy, thank you very much for subscribing. We're just going to do a couple of different things we haven't done yet today. Mark has both as well. Why do I have a home assistant on a Nook and not on a Raspberry Pi? Christian asks. Well, the first, the most important reason is because my Raspberry Pi that was running home assistant had the SD card crap out on me. And I didn't ever want that to happen again. That was before you could potentially boot to a, a, um, an SSD on a Raspberry Pi with home assistant, which I think you can do now. I haven't tried it, but I understand it's possible now. And, um, and the other reason was I, I had a nook that somebody gave me salty automation, gave it to me for free. And so I was like, great. I, I just used it for that. And then I can use other things as a virtual machine. So it was something to try out and it's been working great. So I haven't had to change anything there. Um, but I think now it is completely reasonable for somebody to use a Pi three or a Pi four and run home assistant, um, back up your stuff, like using Google drive. So I've got a, I've got every morning it runs a snapshot and backs up to my Google Drive. So I never lose more than a few hours worth of work if it were to ever crash, um, which if on my Proxmox, it never has. Um, but on a Pi with an SD card, it might. But if you're backing up off of the SD card every day, then even if it does crash and die, your, your SD card burns up and it gives up the ghost, no problem. And with the newest versions of Home Assistant, since I think 117, you can now load your snapshot during the reinstallation process, during the onboarding. It, it used to be you had to install new home assistant and then put in um, Samba and SSH and then copy your, your um, snapshot onto your Pi from some other computer and then, then upload it, right? Now you can actually upload it during the setup process. So it's, a lot easier to recover from those, uh, from those, uh, crashes than it used to be if you do those things. And the biggest reason is just back it up off. Or the biggest thing to do, the most important thing to do is back it up off. Brendan says he's used a 64 bit home assistant with the SSD boot. I run on a four with SSD over USB. So James, so it's, it's definitely a thing now. So the days of your SS, your SD card crashing and wiping out your home assistant completely should be over. That should not happen to anyone anymore. So you don't have to spend hundreds of dollars to buy a Nook and run Proxmox and those things. If you want to, great. If you don't want to, you do not have to. What do you got? Ooh, how many are left? How many, how many five? Five, five quads are left. Have you counted them all? Not yet. But I did the entire box. Like in hockey. The beginning of stream. How many were in there? There was a lot. Yeah, it's amazing. Right. Whoop, whoop. Somebody subscribed. James, thank you very much.
I was Dawson. Dawson has now finished packing up all of the quads, all the dig quads. Are there any dig unos left? Yes. You don't have to do them, but thank you for doing all that stuff. Santa's watching Dawson. Latency is so much better with SSD. I bet, Brendan. I bet. I'd like to do that. I would like to do that. Um, get an SSD. Maybe we can do that as one of the twelve streams of Christmas. Just get it. Get a Pi Four. I need a reason for a Pi Four. I should probably. I want a Pi Four Hundred. Should I just get a Pi Four Hundred? And the thing about the Pi Four Hundred, though, it's not. It wouldn't be good for home assistant because you don't need to have the display hooked up. You don't need to have a keyboard hooked up. Home assistant is made to run headless, so you don't need those things hooked up. Is Santa bald? God only made a few perfect heads and he put hair on the rest. <laughs> Fourth generation PC is more than enough. Fourth generation Pi, you mean? Fourth generation. Use a Pi 3 plus SSD for Octoprint. That's a great idea. My green Santa hat? I don't know. I got to find it though. It disappeared. It disappeared. I rearranged some things in there and it disappeared along with my Frank hat. Oh, like an i3. Yeah. Whatever you can get for cheap. I mean, if you're going to run Home Assistant, don't spend more than, gosh, certainly don't spend more than $100 on anything. I mean, and I only say that because you could get like a, one of those good Pi 4s for whatever they are, 75 bucks or something like that. So uh, don't, don't spend anything more than that to run Home Assistant. Um, it, it, it's just a waste if you if you do. So, James, hello. Have you helped me a lot in the last week with homelessness and now with WLED? Thank you. You're welcome, James. Thanks for subscribing. Guess I better get a Pi and Octoprint now. Yeah, three eight of you better. Oh, so out of time today for Pi and Octoprint, but uh, we will do Pi and Octoprint at some point because I need this. I need to hook it up to this Ender. Uh, love the Permatrack. Installed almost 500 feet this week. Would love to talk to you about a version. Hey. Of it for pool cages. Ooh, yeah. Sean, message me in Discord, buddy. Let's talk. Message me in Discord. So uh, Permatrack, for an update on the Permatrack too, I think we're all cut up on back orders. And it's it's kind of, we're kind of in the same situation as we are with the Unos and Quads right now. So we're caught up on back orders. Now we need to take inventory of what's left so that we can appropriately uh, sell the right number. And and in both cases, Permatrack and Digi Unos and Digi Quads, there is a, a a new batch brewing. It is already going and is already a couple weeks uh, down the pipe of being created. So hopefully, uh, I, I have no doubt that we will run out again. We will run out of pies. Uh, we will run out. Of, sorry, we will we will run out of quads and unos. I promise. In the next couple of days, as soon as I say, you know, I've got a hundred left, you know, and put them on the website, I am going to be out of them within a day. I guarantee. So. Uh, the same will happen with the Permatrack, and um, what we will try and do is not um, not make it too long before we get some back in. Getting the whips out. Quindor has been Quindor has been great. He has been super great. Uh, him and and all of his China uh, folks that are that are working at, at getting them to us as fast as possible. So, and they do. If you can't wait, there is the international store. You can get them there, even if you're in the U.S. Um, the reason I do them in the U S is cause it just helps me and it, um, gets them to you a little faster. We don't waste a bunch of money on shipping 20 pieces left in Canada. And then Will's got them in Canada too. Tollbringer's got them in Canada. All right. So when the, when the light goes up like that, stream's over, right? Yeah. Okay. And, um, that I changed, I had the stream too long. That means I've done it too long. I think Grace wants me to hang out here. Don't you Grace? Yeah, Grace wants some daddy time. So um, let's call the kids up. I know that she who shall not be named uh, in, um, is not working with Home Assistant right now. You can try it, but it's not going to work. because, And that's because I changed the password for Amazon and I haven't updated it yet. <laughs> so, Griplock Ties. I actually used Griplock Ties. Thank you for always plugging those, Nightbot. But Griplock Ties, uh, which is actually shameless. Plugging that. Griplock Ties is, uh, I actually used some. I actually used some. Oh, now they're sold out, Will. Oh, you sold out of quads. Oh, I see. You sold out of quads. Yeah. It's not working. We'll get them. We'll get them there. No, it's not working. I knew it wasn't going to work. I knew it wasn't going to work. I'll go get First them. stream and it's ending. What is Permatrack? James says, what is Permatrack? Permatrack is uh, my invention, I guess, for um, mounting lights on your house. So when I, when I did the first 
mounting of lights on my house, I used some vinyl channeling, which still works great. And it's still cheaper than the stuff that we are selling now, but, uh, it works great. And, um, but, but it had, to, I had to drill all the holes and it took a long time. And so I came up with something better and the better stuff is Permatrack and it's a sheet metal channel. Um, and it's got the holes in it already and you can just snap it. You put some mounts up on your, wherever you want it and you pop it in and it's great. It's, it's, it's more expensive, no doubt. And actually just got a little more expensive because it's not as cheap as we had hoped to get it from China. Things are costing more. Hey, Tyson's here. That's one of Jackson's buddies. <laughs> Twitch and YouTube, both. Mini Owl 1811, check me out on there. <laughs> and Tyson, what do you stream, Tyson? Uh, Just games? Yeah, shiny uh, Pokemon and games and stuff. Yeah, that's me. Okay, there you go. Mini Owl, Mini Owl 1811. Mini Owl 1811. All right, there you go. Gotta make, that plug, you know? Gotta make the plug. And there's Zach without a head. <laughs> All right, guys, how should we sign off today? I don't always thanks for watching. Until next time. Should we sign <laughs> off like should we sign off like not Santa Claus, but we'll sign off like uh, a very proper um guard no, at Mrs. Mrs. Sign off like Mrs. Claus. Oh, okay, we're gonna sign off like Mrs. Claus. You ready? Hi. Sign up like Mrs. Claus. Ready? As always, thanks for watching. Until next time. Adios. Would you like a cookie? Yeah, thank you. <laughs> All right. Have a great one, everybody. Hey, by the way, I am going to stream again on Tuesday night because I got a couple more things from Banggood that uh, didn't make the cut for this stream. But I will, I, I'm will. i going to have a, a midweek stream on Tuesday night. So be there. Adios. Bye. Bye. And hot cocoa, would you like?